And welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Larry and Spencer, and we're discussing Why Women Kill Season 2, Episode Number 6, Dangerous Intruder. If you've not hit the sub button, please do so. We do these reviews every single week. Leave a like, leave a comment, and let's start with We Had a Death This Week. Uh, full spoilers, by the way, if, you, if you're not a regular on the channel. Uh, Carlo is gone. Carlo is gone. And this plays into, which I th- it seems brilliant, and we'll, we'll discuss that right now. So Alma's plan, basically, is to have Bertram kill Carlo, and then she's going to plant the drugs that's used to kill him on Alma. She calls uh, Catherine to basically plant the seed in her mind that Alma may have killed him. Um when in fact it was Bertram. It, how is this plan going to fail, guys? Because <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be some kind of conflict or drama or something is going to go wrong. That's a good question because it's it, it feels like a perfect plan. They perfectly set it up. But here's here's my theory: is that remember, detective uh, the detective was ta- or the private eye. It's not the detective, but he was taking pictures in the background. Sorry, I'm staying outside if it gets windy and loud. Let me know. Uh, but he's taking pictures in the background. But Alma and Bertram were standing right in that doorway. I'm thinking that he's going to catch them in one of the pictures. Yes, uh, in the, in the he was hanging up the pictures. Uh, right before his the end scene with him and D, and my immediate thought is, what's on those pictures? And they didn't show us, so I I agree that that's probably the setup for, uh, I guess next week. Yeah, yeah that's well, my assumption too. Almost, it would almost exonerate uh, Rita because back then there's not going to be DNA evidence. It's just basically circle circumstantial stuff. But to have Bertram, who's a vet, so if they were just like, well. If there's any question as to how he died and they start looking into um, like what was used or anything, because remember, he said, I make it look natural. And unless there's cause for alarm, no one's going to check for what I use. But now if they're in the background of this picture, they would check and it would point to him. It wouldn't even point to Rita at this point. Well, yeah, you know, it's the fact that and that's the point of failure there that, you know, that. uh that that Alma's husband has no idea what she's planning and you know he plans the way he plans things he plans for no one to ever check on the thing he he does for it to look like sort of a natural thing and yet she's had her own plan which I'm surprised they went with because I, I think well like towards the end of the episode um well the last episode we recorded that we mentioned that this might be her plan but uh I'm surprised they went there you know either way you know that like you said Vern is a point of failure the detective uh because that photo and and i agree that you know while they're probably not the center of any of those photos they're probably you know in the shadows or in the background somewhere in one of those photos uh easy enough for for d to make out you know for her to see you know that oh my god those are my parents they were there that that night like but uh but yeah you know it's um it's definitely gonna blow up in her face alma definitely doesn't have this planned as well as she thought and you know, I, I do agree that the detective will be likely the, the point of failure in all this, that things will seem to be going well, you know, but that she's made a very, very critical mistake in uh in, in making that phone call. We we learned something very important and, and I'm curious to how this is gonna factor in as well. We we learned that Rita and Isabel, the maid, uh, it, she calls her cousin. Um, so I'm assuming they're either related or just really close because we know that they killed somebody, a guy named Harry, um, at some point in their past, they were on the run. They sort of changed their identities. It was a quick little scene where they're sort of given some backstory, but there's some skeletons in Rita's closet. And I'm curious to, if any of that could sort of play into it. Cause Isabel's basically like, look, we can kill Carlo. And then when he dies, they're like, cool, we didn't have to do it. But I don't know. Their past may come back as well. That was something I was thinking about. Well, it sounded like they were also from the same area in Texas. Like they were from Texas also. So were they kind of not, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Not setting up, scouting. Were they basically scouting Carlo from the beginning? And then they were setting him up from quite a long time ago 
before this ever happened? Uh, because it seems like where they, the last person died was in Texas. And that's where, I mean, Texas is a big state, so it doesn't have to be that. But for them to both be from the same area in the same state seems too coincidental for it not to tie in somehow. Yeah, yeah it seems like that's potentially where she met where she met Carlo and it seems very planned. Like maybe she crafted this personality to be something, you know, to be someone that would, uh, attract Carlo. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I was wondering when they said they were cousins, it kind of made sense because, I uh, I've been wondering for a little while now, it's like, why is this maid so loyal? You know, why is the maid so loyal? What's her name? Yeah. Story? I've been wondering that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when, you know, she finally just mentioned that they were relatives, it's like, Oh, okay. That, that makes some sense now. Uh, like, and yeah, I'm curious about that too. When they've done this before, she mentions that they've done it before. Like, is that also going to come out? Are we going to find out who, who they really are, who they were via flashback or via an investigation or, or something, you know, because now I'm curious about, you know, both their past, not, not what's, just what's going on now, but you know, what, what was their past? Who were they before? Uh, you know, which again, like I, I got to call the show on this because I, I I believe like uh, in episode one they mentioned that this is not Rita's story, but it very much seems like it's it's partially Rita's story as well. Oh, it's absolutely <laughs> Rita's story at this point. Yeah, I would I would argue you're right. Her and Alma, um, those are your leads. Those are the leads. Yeah, completely. They get the most screen time, and everything revolves around both of them. Yeah, yeah so I. Mean- I- I just believe the Rita kind of take over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and that's the thing, you know, when when it finally blows up in Alma's face, this may be to Rita's advantage, or they might they may both wind up going doing time because it may look like uh like not only that Alma set her up that but that it was a thing that Rita planned, you know, because of everything that's coming out. Because there's the conversation with her friend where where she says that said that Carlo beats Rita, you know, and that'll come back in, in the investigation as well. And, you know, it'll, it'll potentially look like it was something set up 100% by Rita, but that Alma and her husband executed it. You know, that even the fact that her, uh, her, her lover was distracting Carlo's daughter at the time, you know, it'll seem like this whole thing was orchestrated by her. The stranger on a train. Was that what it was? The, Strangers on a train? Yeah, where they kill each other's um, nuisances. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Rita fucking up her garden. She can be tied to, because I think that's where Alma's going to go, is she's still trying to set up Rita. So I think she's going to try to set up Rita for uh, Miss Yost's death. So now it looks like Rita may have killed Miss Yost to help out Alma. And vice versa, where Alma helped Rita out by killing Carlo. That would be great if they, both, <laughs> if they go down that way. Um, because, yeah, the, the Miss Yost thing is still ongoing. Yeah, they, they haven't addressed it in a while, but, you know, it's I'm sure it's going to pop back up. And when somebody starts digging, it's, it's, it's going <laughs> to, I think it's going to, be a problem now what is crazy is the fact that they were able to destroy um almost garden and nobody saw i guess she dug it deeper but miss yost's grave yeah um, do you do you think scooter so scooter seems to be into Catherine like really and then she also gives him the idea that you know rita you know when she's done with you she's done with you and so that whole theory a week or two ago where you guys were talking about how Scooter is going to go against Rita and he's going to double down on Catherine and say, no, I'm going to go this route. This is who I'm going to be with. I think they laid the seeds for that, especially in this episode. They really did. And I'm surprised that they're doing a lot of the, uh, the bolder things that I just really didn't expect from them. Uh, you know, like, like that, like, the whole fact that uh, almost plan is intricate to the point of, Oh, we're going to kill Carlo and we're going to frame her instead of just, we're going to, we're going to kill Rita. You know, the fact that, you know, scooters laying his own seeds and that, you know, via his re- relationship with, with Carlo's daughter is maybe seeing Rita as 
more of something that will someone who will turn on him when the time is right. He's definitely laying some seeds this week. <laughs> like, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, this is an interesting turn that I mentioned, you know, that we all mentioned, but I didn't think was necessarily you know going to happen. But it's bold that they're going there. Yeah, it's cool because it, it's it's more. Um, I mean, it's just all the different layers and like the, to, to coordinate it where they all were back at the mansion, Rita and Isabel are asleep. Bertram's killing Carlo, almost trying to get Bertram. Vern is taking pictures. Um, Catherine and, and uh, scooter are hooking up on the couch. I mean, the way all that played out was just beautiful. Like I was, <laughs> I was sitting there smiling. Like I love when, when a show can balance this many characters and storylines and how all, all these storylines are going to play off each other. We still get four more episodes. So, you know, there, there is no rush. The the show definitely has time to breathe. Yeah. It's a, and it's a lot to resolve, but they definitely move at a brisk enough pace that I could see, you know, everything being resolved in those four episodes, you know, there's so much going on and there always is each episode that, you know, it's uh, I'm completely engaged and unfortunately, I'm an easily distracted person, especially when it comes to entertainment. But, you know, I'm always, you know, very engaged with this show and what's going on. And it seems like they transition fast enough. Just, to, just to, I've just got to compliment the structure of this show overall. You know, it's, it's so well executed. Well, I was thinking, too, um, is Rita going to use this as the reason Carlo, Carlos died? Because... Rita has all this information about how Carlos hates anybody who's who Catherine's with and but now she's with somebody now they have evidence that she was with somebody are they gonna basically say that she was the one that killed him uh instead of because she doesn't know that Alma did it not yet anyway but is Rita gonna try and spin it that direction uh to try and set Catherine up because if she's able to do that, then she'd be able to get Catherine out of the picture and inherit everything. Whereas right now, Catherine's still going to fight. So I don't know if she's going to try to pin the death on her and go that route or if it's going to be like we said. I, although I think that's how it's going to be at the end of it. That's what the detective's going to find. And Alma and Rita are going to go to jail, but they're going to go to jail for killing each other's spouses. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. And I think it would be hilarious and yet, you know, fitting for the way this show is plays out typically. And uh, well, episode to episode, if they each go to jail and if the murders are discovered, but you know, the deductive reasoning behind it because of how everything looks, it's completely wrong, you know, but it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and 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 is Grace? Uh, they keep bringing Grace in. Um, I don't know how she's going to play into the bigger picture, but I think she will in some way. Um, she was in this episode briefly. We we get the um the D pregnancy storyline, which I'm so glad got resolved in this episode because I was I was starting to be like, oh, this is I I, I was not enjoying it because she's like, oh, am I I can't tell Vern. I got to keep it a secret. I hate that. I hate that and that's one of the things I hate about romantic comedies that's my biggest gripe is that whole secret midway through the film where a character can't tell another character a thing and if they would just tell them it would resolve all the conflict um, but you know we were getting that and I was like shit and then finally you know she was like oh, I'm gonna give it up and we got the nice little scene at the diner with her friend which was a fine scene but luckily Vern figured well Rita told him and then he basically was just like, I'm cool with it. He went and got a re- wedding ring. He's like, yo, yeah, you're pregnant. I don't care. It's cool. Let's get married. And I was that's very happy that they resolved. Rom- hmm? I said, that's my favorite part of rom-coms. Dude, it's, 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 it's <laughs> the, the day that they come up with a way to, to create a, an original story that doesn't rely on that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we did Palm Springs. It, but no, because he kept a secret, remember? Oh, yes. That's uh, what I'm saying. He kept this. He, she didn't. Oh, did you, have you seen that, Larry? I still haven't. Oh, you know. shit. I won't, I won't say <laughs> that. But there is a secret that he keeps. And then when she finds out, she's keeping a secret, too. They both are. 
Um, although he, I don't think he gives a shit about hers. But when she finds out his, it pisses her off. I'm glad that irritates you know other people as much as it irritates me because that is like one of my biggest problems with rom coms that you know every plot seems to be if if you all would just talk like adults, <laughs> then it would solve everything. Is, yeah. yeah, right. So yeah, I think we should split up because I'm pregnant. I'm like I don't care about that. Oh really? And then they get married, and there we are. <laughs> when, when when that scene happened, and she's like, I, I can't tell you, and I'm just like, no, don't she's do like, this. But you could though. You, you know? could have just said, yeah. <laughs> and but the fact that they resolved it in one episode and it's not a, a plot point for you know the remainder, I was like, good. I was very happy by that, and okay with it by the end. But for a second there, I was getting I was getting concerned. Right? Yeah, because it's a simple thing. Like, because it it would have played out, you know, roughly the same way regardless. You know, one way or another, it's like you know she says, "Oh, I'm pregnant," and it's Scooter's baby. Either he'd be, so I'm going to go. Either he'd go, cool, I respect that. Or it would play out like it played out now. So either way, you know, she risked losing him. And he wasn't going to be like, you know, like, we've established his character. He clearly wasn't going to be like a cold jerk about it. And he showed no signs about that, you know. So, yeah, they could have just talked it out. And But like you said, I'm glad that that was resolved as quickly as it was. The um, What do you think... I mean, the big sort of cliffhanger ending uh, is Catherine getting the phone call. And you know, we talked about it a few moments ago, but the ball's in her court. What exactly is she going to do? Is she going to immediately think, oh, he was poisoned and want, you know, toxicology ran on him? I don't know the specifics of technology and what they were capable of doing uh, at this point in time. I'm assuming they, they could do that. Bertram basically said they could. Um, but I, I, what is Catherine going to do? And what is all? And, and the, it is funny the fact that Alma had nothing to do with this. Not Alma, excuse me. That Rita had nothing to do with this. And Catherine's going to be going after her. Um, what does the will say? You know, that was another thing. What exactly is in the will, and how is the state going to be divided up between the two? That's going to probably be another big point in the well, next episode. Was he able to get something in writing uh, that we don't know about? Because remember, right before the stroke where he you know basically went down the stairs and almost died he was already not a huge fan of rita like he was not trusting her he knew something was going on he was already suspicious of scooter not necessarily scooter himself but a scooter uh but for we don't know for certain maybe there's already something in writing that exonerates um Catherine and basically is just naming her the heir, maybe even apologizing, which at this point it would actually make me more mad because Carlos was such a dick that in his will, making him a good guy would be kind of ridiculous. But uh, getting rid of Rita per his will wouldn't be that ridiculous and would not be that, uh, I guess, out there. So this, I am curious, like you, that's a good thing that you bring up because I am curious to see what they're going to do with the will. Well, yeah. And, and it's a, it's a good question too, because given the person that Carlo was, we know he was very cruel. So we don't know what's actually in his will at this moment, like whether she gets anything or whether, you know, Carlos gets a laugh's laugh because neither of them gets anything in, in any way. And if he just wanted a lawyer so that he could rewrite the will so that his daughter would get something in order to spite Rita even hard, harder for the, the things he was doing, you know? That could be the twist, yeah. Yeah, you know, so given that Carlo was the person he was, he, he may be like, neither of you get anything. All my money goes to this other person or or something else, you know? It's like, or, or to my dearest love, the maid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a twist because seeing... Maybe her backstab Rita, you just be like, well, sorry, I got all the money now. Like, <laughs> their true relationship. Or if he's just like, I leave it to the uh, was the dry cleaner. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like this joke. And then Scooter gets all the money. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have, okay. um, we have a scene. So throughout the whole episode, you know, almost made that, tr you know, she's transformed into someone willing to kill like absolutely at this point 
and manipulating Bertram in order to do it. Bertram basically, you know, opens his heart to her and is like, look, I'm giving up that life. I've, I know the error of my ways. And she's like, no, we, 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 I need you to do that. And so, you know, she convinces him to do it. And then afterwards, you know, they get in the house and, you know, they, they just, you know, they hook up and they're just excited. And there's this energy to their relationship now. And she is now a, a, a villain in such a big way. And I'm very Very curious now that you have Rita and Alma both willing to kill. We know that Rita is involved in a murder in the past. You have two murderers basically. Now, technically Alma's not killed anybody uh, directly, um, but two women willing to kill. Hmm? Neither did Charles Manson. but (laughs) (laughs) But you now have these two characters that are, uh, going to war with each other and like i said four entire episodes left that's four hours i mean that's a lot of content so very excited for the remainder of the episodes this is my favorite thing i watch every week although this weekend there's so much content on um online between uh oh and if you've not uh we have if you're watching this on saturday tomorrow we have a uh, review going up for america the motion picture um it's a little different than what we typically do uh you'll see if you decide to listen to it. Um, but yeah, a lot of content, but this is still by far my favorite thing that I, that I typically watch. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, um, uh, like I, I do want to go back to one thing that, uh, with, with scooter though, cause that's, cause y'all, y'all mentioned scooter in the will that could be funny. Cause one thing we found out was, well, at least I think that we're sort of seeing in, in this show is that Scooter actually is kind of an okay actor because the way he's playing everybody, you know, he's not that bright, but he's, he's actually okay at acting in his day-to-day life. He's kind of uh, like that one episode of always sunny. He's pulling a Charlie here, you know, and he's uh he's uh like, and he may actually be in the will for all we know. And we may get a flashback as to why, you know what I mean? Like I leave all my money to my dr- to my favorite drinking buddy, Scooter, or something, you know, for all we know. Dude, the, when he took his shirt off, it was at the fireplace. And, like, <laughs> just the way, you're right, like, he knows exactly what to do and when to do it. And, you know, he was trying to get her to go back to his apartment. That wasn't working. But, you know, he, he improvised, uh, and he made it work. Uh, boy, ever did he make yeah. it work. And uh, oh. You know his sister, who his sister is, right? Scooter's sister? On a no. Product. Yeah, no, no. It's uh Alexandria Daddario or whatever her name is. The one with the giant blue eyes. What's she done? Everything. She was in like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. She was in the Oh the shit. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's yeah, his sister. Look at her face. Yeah, that's his like sister. And they were mm. like, knowing it now, because she was in season one of this show. So um uh, seeing their because I saw the last name and I was like Holy shit, that looks familiar. So I looked it up, and it is. It's this sister. And their eyes, like, the facial expressions they do, the giant eyes, like, everything. They look a lot alike. <laughs> You're still going to have to throw a few more references at me. <laughs> oh, well, been put a new, picture in there. Been on True Detective. The first yeah, she was on Detective. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Is, has he done anything else? You checked his IMDb? Yeah. Yeah, he's been in several other things too, but I don't recall them at this point in time. But yeah, I looked it up because I was like, that name, I was like, why does that name sound so familiar? And then as soon as I saw, I typed in the last name, her name popped up also, and I was like, oh shit. I just think it's also cool that Nick Frost has found, uh, you know, a really cool project that he can be, you know, front and center in. And um, because, he, you know, he he does little bit roles here and there in film these days, but... You know, he's really talented, and I'm just glad that he has, has something something to do. That's one of the coolest things about streaming is that a lot of actors who, who don't, don't necessarily get enough work, in my opinion, they have an outlet where they can do a 10-hour, you know, series and and shine. You know, there, there's talk of that Arnold Schwarzenegger might uh, be doing a show soon, and I think that's perfect for him. I was slightly off topic, but, you know, there's an actor whose career is just just basically ended. And I'm like, you know, I always feel like there's more there. He has more to give. You go back and look at some of his old movies and you're like, man, they were so cool. But I think a, a streaming show, that might be the answer for, for someone like him. But, but yeah, Nick Frost, uh, 
great in this show. I don't think it like the way he plays that part. This is one of those roles where it's like I don't know who else could pull this off. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I can imagine anyone else in this role. That's true, and and it is very well done. Uh, and uh, John Candy. <laughs> R.I.P. Man, God, I love John Candy. We talk about that all the time. We should do a bunch of John Candy movies. I'm, I'm, I don't hey. disagree with that. <laughs> He's one of those greats that uh, that um, unfortunately has been somewhat forgotten. But yeah, they made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I have anything else I want to talk about uh, regarding episode number six of season two of Why Women Kill? Uh, I don't believe that I do, young sir. <laughs> yeah, I think that's everything I want to talk about. All right. Um, yeah, another great episode. Four left. We'll be doing all of them. I'm not sure if the last two will be on the same week or not. And the only reason I say that is they seem to shuffle around their IMDb, IMDb page a lot. And I know they dropped the first two episodes, so I don't know if they were going to drop the last two together. I don't know. So we three or four weeks left. And uh, like normal, if you hit a like and leave a comment. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.